the common thing I hear uh, when I talk about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is, well, it's not real. And then I guess I, uh, my re rejoinder is, well, take that $20 bill out of your wallet. How, how real is that? So go through uh, where the confidence in cryptocurrency comes from versus the confidence in government-backed fiat. Of course, and that's uh, that's a very important question. The confidence in cryptocurrency comes from a couple of different places, and I'm not uh, standing here to defend right. cryptocurrencies, but just putting the truth out there. We've moved quite a f quite far when it comes to the digital world. Emails are real, although you can't, you can print an email, but it's a real thing that's online. Websites are real. It, anything on the internet is real, right? But if you go out and say, hey, can I actually hold a YouTube video in my hand somehow and feel it? Well, it's just, it's just a different thing, right? That's the mindset we're approaching digital assets with. Digital currencies, especially cryptocurrency, solved a big problem that existed about 10 or 15 years ago of the double spend, which could mean that if you had a digital currency of some kind, you could copy it and paste it and send it to 100 different people like you could do with a word file. But cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies solved that problem, and now you cannot do that. If you have 100 bitcoins or any other currency, you cannot send the same coin to everybody. In fact, when you send some form of that payment to someone, it decreases from where in from your wallet where they are stored. So some fundamental problems that existed in the early days, and this is 25 to 30 years ago, uh, in the early days of computers, internet, they, are, they don't exist anymore. So I really believe that audiences, viewers, and us as general public need to really go out and educate ourselves on how far technology has progressed in the last 10 or 20 years. And today we're living in the era of a huge digital world that's digitally driven with not just with cryptocurrencies, but with um, with different forms of payment, many currencies. I mean, we use our credit cards. I mean, that's a digital form of payment as well, but it's linked to the bank. It's linked to it's linked to the institution, and uh, but but a, a a slight revolution is happening there as well, sure. where currencies, business bank based currencies are also now digitizing, and that's happening with the yuan in China as an example. So we've moved on from that big question that how real is this? It's as real as anything else in the world. Now, I noticed that, uh, thank you for that answer. I think that uh, puts it in perspective. I noticed uh, just recently that the uh, nation of El Salvador has declared Bitcoin as their currency. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, so that's a great example of a country adopting Bitcoin. And what the economic reasons for that is, well, El Salvador is a country that's still growing. It's uh, not a big powerhouse, let's say, like the United States or China. Uh, it's a country that's struggling a little bit with its economy, similarly with many other countries, maybe Venezuela or uh, Cuba, or there's many examples of countries that could benefit from a much stable economic system. El Salvador has announced that they're going to adopt Bitcoin as a form of payment and adopt it as a currency, which means they're looking at a different economic system, maybe to bring more stability to the country, and they're banking on Bitcoin as a globally neutral currency that's not connected to gold, that's not backed by any specific reserve or a country to create that neutrality. So if I hold Bitcoins here or somebody else holds them in Germany or China or Spain, we could all go to El Salvador and spend our Bitcoins and get services and so on. So it's a different financial model, a different economic model that a country has now adopted, which opens the way for other countries to look into this. The question becomes, is Bitcoin going to become the de facto currency for the rest of the world? I think we're many, many, many years away from that because the current financial systems across the world in different countries are great. They've done a great job so far, but but can they can they be changed a little bit? There might be an opportunity. It's going to be very interesting to see the interplay between a, a government-backed uh, currencies and the disaggregated model that is uh, Bitcoin and these other currencies. Uh, I, I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper on those questions after the break. Please stay with us as we discuss these matters with Ian Khan. We'll be right back.